Welcome back. I want to quickly talk about another vulnerability or a bug which is called HTML injection. And it is quite similar to the cross-site scripting attack. Just as its name says, in this type of the attack, we're not injecting JavaScript code, but instead we're injecting HTML code. And you might say that that is not really dangerous, however, even though that is correct, HTML injection is still a bug that you should be searching for. Why? Well, if there is an HTML injection in some big company, what an attacker could do is they could change the entire page look. They could add whatever they want to that page, they could post different pictures, they could completely change that web page to their own liking just by injecting HTML code. And that would be pretty bad for that company because someone else would have a complete control of how that page would look like. So how can we test for that? How can we find HTML injection? Well, you can just go and navigate to the access reflected and accesses stored that we covered in previous videos and we can test for HTML injections here. So usually what you want to test is different HTML tags such as h1, h2 or different header tags just to see whether your input will be interpreted as HTML code. So let's give it a try. Everything is on low and if I go right here and just type h1 which is an HTML tag for header size 1 and I type test, close the HTML tag by typing these arrows and then closed h1. I click on submit and we can see it does indeed interpret our input as an HTML code. If we were to type for example h2 or h3 and then test once again, this would be smaller size which is a good enough indication that there is an HTML injection on this page. Now there is no point of us changing this to medium or high because this specific input is used for JavaScript attacks, so only JavaScript syntax will be filtered, therefore HTML injection will be the same on medium level security as well. As I mentioned, this is also a bug and it should be reported because for now we only typed in a small HTML code which changes our input to size 1 header and size 3 header. But what we could also do, for example on a stored page, and let me just reset the database real quick from the previous video where we covered the access stored. And if you were to type an HTML injection right here, let's say the name will be test, and here we type this code. Let me first write it inside of a terminal and then we are going to copy it to this page just so you can see everything better. So open brackets and then meta HTTP equiv equals open double quotes refresh close double quotes, content equals zero, dot and comma, and then space URL equals HTTP slash slash Google dot com. And then close double quotes and close the tag by typing slash and close right arrow. If we were to inject this code, well, let's just see what would happen. Let's copy this code right here, go to our page and type it here. I click on sign guestbook and do you see what is happening? It is constantly trying to go to a different page and it is constantly refreshing that page. It pretty much made the page completely unusable because we cannot even go up here and type something in. So what we must do is we must change to a different directory such as file inclusion and go and clear our database or reset the database because we will not be able to visit the stored since it will automatically start refreshing the page and trying to visit google.com. However, if we were to type same right here in the reflected and we were to change for example from google.com to facebook.com and click on submit, well, pretty much the same thing would happen but for some reason it doesn't want to visit facebook.com and we're going to take a look at why that is. Let us see whether we specified something incorrectly. So URL equals HTTP 
Okay, so I've tested it out and for some reason it doesn't seem to work on Kali Linux browser, but if I go to my Windows 10 machine and I visit the Metasploitable page and right here I copy the same code that we just sent in our Kali Linux, just we copy it and try it from our Windows 10 machine. I just changed the URL to bbing.com, paste it right here and click on submit. Well, now it fully redirects our access reflected input and the entire page to this bing.com website. Let's give it a try what happens if we do that on the stored. So I type test as name and I type this command right here as a message. And it appears that there is a limitation of characters right here. So what we can do is we can inspect the element, navigate to the body, then let's go and find the message input. So under the form, we go table, body, and message input. We check right here. It says that the max length is 50. So what I can do is I can type 500. And now if I go and try to copy this, so I will just delete all of this, paste the code, and click sign guestbook. Well, now it actually redirects. So you will see that even when I try to go back, and I go, for example, to brute force and again on access stored, it will just load bing.com. So with the help of code injection, we can even redirect pages to different websites. And this is usually what attackers do. So if they find a stored code injection vulnerability, what they will do is they will just inject a redirection link to a different website, possibly a malicious website or a website where they advertise something or something similar. And every time someone visits a page, for example, they want to go and access stored on our Metasploitable page, well, they just load ping.com. And that is the power of HTML injection vulnerability. So now that we covered this, in the next video, we're going to go on to another big vulnerability, which is called SQL injection. See you there.